You can learn from anyone, anywhere, and you can get great talented courses and teachers to come into your classroom in effect, uh, even if they live across the world. I'm Catherine Mangue Ward with Reason TV. I'm speaking with Michael Horn, who's the co-founder of the Clayton Christensen Institute and the author of a new book called Blended. Thanks for being with me, Michael. Thanks for having me. School is really boring <laughs> for a lot of kids. Uh, can you describe what um, what you advocate sort of uh, at the Clayton Christensen Institute and in your book for for fixing that? Yeah, I think one of the big reasons that school is so boring, quite frankly, is that we all have different learning needs at different times, different things turn us on, and with the opportunity of online learning coming on, what we talk about is shifting from this factory model system to a student-centered one that personalizes for each and every child. Let's start with the kid who really can't follow what's going on in class, who is, you know, being given Shakespeare. What, what do you want to see schools do with that kid? Yeah, so that kid who's struggling doesn't need to be seeing an advanced text way beyond his, his or her reading level. There's great software like Lexia Learning, for example, that's out there. Put him in a blended learning environment where for a station he's going to be doing Lexia Learning, really learning the fundamentals of reading. And then move into small group instruction with the teacher with maybe others at his level or maybe a diverse array of students because you want a more rich conversation around a text. Another thing you can use is there's lots of software out there that will take a, a very complicated text and bring it down in a reading level so that you can still have a conversation around uh, the same material throughout a classroom but you can read at your different level. Is there any point to kind of sending kids to a school building to sit in front of a computer? My, my sense is, and the data seems to show, they need a blended environment, meaning the academics may be online to tailor it for their needs, but that real support and custodial safe uh, environment where they can uh, have teachers to be there as mentors and quite frankly to have other kids there as friends because, you know, kids it turns out like to have fun with their friends and that's a really important part of schooling that we don't talk about a lot. Um, one thing that strikes me about blended learning is that it helps avoid some of the negative peer pressure both around excelling and around falling short. Yeah, absolutely. So I think what you see in blended learning environments is that as opposed to a traditional environment where someone looks like the slow kid or maybe it's cool to actually not be smart, in a blended environment when you're working an online curriculum or with other peers that are at your same level, uh, you have this anonymity that really allows you to excel and it becomes sort of a game-based environment. So are you willing to stake the claim that blended learning reduces wedgies? <laughs> I, 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 still to be determined, but okay. I'm, hope, I'm hopeful. Okay, so now, now talk to me about the kid on the other end. You know, a kid who's smart at a school that's good at handling smart students, but, but sort of cookie cutters that kid. Yep. Um, you know, how, how does that work? The reality with online learning is you can learn from anyone anywhere and you can get great talented courses and teachers to come into your classroom in effect uh, even if they live across the world. To the extent that we're letting kids personalize their learning, do we wind up with every second grade boy in America doing like a six month unit on dinosaurs and you right. know not learning anything else? My gut is that a second grader, a lot less choice in what that looks like. By the time you get in high school, I think you want to see a lot more choice. How do we deal with credentialing in that environment? How do we say this kid is ready for their auto body apprenticeship and this kid is ready for Harvard? How do we signal that to other players? Yeah, this is going to be the tricky thing, quite frankly, as this revolution sort of continues to play itself out is how signaling and credentialing changes because before you had a stamp that you went to a certain school and people didn't know what that really meant, but they just said, well, like other smart people also went there, so you're probably good enough, I'll hire you. If a state tries to build assessments for every possible subject that is under the sun, good luck, it's insane. Um, so I, what I think what we'd like to see is a lot of organic from industry, from other uh, uh, third-party providers start to come in. I think it'll actually start at the higher ed and first, with employers uh, coming together uh, to create a lot of these assessments and then it'll start to trickle down over time. So uh, just to wrap up, why don't you give me your quick list of the policies that are in your way? Yeah, so as you've written, I, I, I know um, we want to wipe out all these regulations that constrain how people accomplish tasks. So the assumption that uh, there's one teacher to many students as opposed to team teaching or anything that says like this is the process you have to follow and the resources you have to use is a regulation that I think is a bad one. Okay, thank you very much. I thank appreciate you. you speaking with us.